Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. All right, I, I have a new phone and I think a new love in my life. This is the Droid Turbo from Verizon. Now, I'm, I'm holding it up next to, maybe this will be better to show it over here, holding it up next to my um, Droid Motor, Moto X. These are really very similar phones. The Moto X, second generation, uh, I was so excited by this phone because, you know, it's close to a pure Google experience. I loved the leather back from Horween, and I really was looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a much improved Moto X experience. And I was in every respect except one. The battery life, a little scant. A little scant. I couldn't quite get through the day. And, you know, I took this to London with me. And the fact that by the time, you know, it was dinner time, I had to retire this phone really made me sad. So I was having, I had high hopes for when this came out. This is the Droid Turbo. Now, there are some negatives you should know about Verizon only, so don't even consider this if you're not a Verizon customer, although there are rumors that they're selling this in Latin America under the Droid Max name. 3,900 milliamp hour battery. That's 50% more than the Moto X, and it's, for that reason, a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, and they don't have the same Moto Maker style backs. You only, only have three choices. Ballistic nylon and the metallic glass. This is the red metallic glass. You don't have a lot of choices in memory either. The red and black metallic glass have 32 gigabytes of storage. You can get 64 gigs, but only if you get the nylon uh, back. I decided not to go with the nylon back. I kind of like red. And I think for many of us, 32 gigs is probably enough. They have up the specs. This is a spec giant. Not only the Snapdragon 805 at, uh, uh, I think it's 3.7 gigahertz. You've got very high-end GPUs. You've also got a very high resolution screen. This is Quad HD, 25, what is that, 2550 by 1440. Let me put it this way, more than 500 dots per inch. Now, I'm going to point out, as I put this right next to the Moto X, which is 1080p, you really can't tell the difference. <laughs> there, there comes a point when you have a little bit, you know, you have more dots than you really need. These are both really crisp, beautiful uh, AMOLED uh, displays. They really look good. And by the way, yes, the processor is much faster in theory, plus three gigs of RAM. Should be a much snappier phone of the Turbo. Yeah, not really. Not so much. Uh, they're both about the same, frankly. If I load Google+, Plus, you'll see they load pretty well. Actually, I'd already loaded it over here, so it loads a little bit faster. But, uh, but everything scrolls the same. There's not a huge huge difference in the capabilities of it. So don't get this phone because it has more memory or a faster processor. You probably shouldn't even get this phone uh, because it has a higher resolution screen, although it is a gorgeous screen. Uh, they are doing pretty much the same thing Motorola did with the Moto X. You have your own, sorry, wake-up <laughs> command. As you can see, I've changed that wake-up command for this phone to help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I find it goes off a lot less when I say, <laughs> when I say that. You're our only hope. It, all, it also has uh, the adaptive display capability, uh, the, the four uh, infrared sensors that will, when I wave my hand over it, show me the time and any notifications I've got. You know, all the things that, that make a Moto X really a great... Uh, okay, I'm, you could just stop <laughs> listening right now. I'm not talking to you. See, I think the Moto X is just a little bit jealous of my uh, Droid Turbo. Um, some of the things that are on the Moto X are missing here. Besides design, that metal rim on the Moto X also allowed it to do some antenna tuning. So the Moto X reception theoretically was better. It's hard to tell. Verizon's got a pretty good signal here, so I haven't seen much of a difference. You should know, though, that this is a single antenna phone. So if you're on Verizon, it does not support voice, voice and data at the same time. There are rumors there'll be a software update that will turn on Volte, V-O-L-T-E, voice over LTE on this phone. And then with Volte, you'll be able to use voice and data at the same time. But currently, as sold, you cannot. So uh, if that's an issue for you, and I know it is for some people, this is not uh, probably the right phone for you. I have to say I'm a little miffed because they put these giant batteries in here. They're really fantastic. But then... They say to themselves, well, gosh, we have such a big battery. Why don't we quadruple the display resolution and, and ramp up the CPU 
and pretty much by that time you've gotten no net gain. There's the bragging rights. You you can this brag a, about it. This is a spec yeah, phone. Yeah. This is a phone where you just go, man. I got the state of the art phone. And by the way, this is Kevlar backed metallic. Yeah, you're right. So, so. The, when the bullet comes, you want to be where you have that. It's in your... Droid. Yes. It also right. has a disadvantage of, as with all Droid phones, it's got a lot of Verizon cruft installed on it. You know, I, you can disable it, but you can't uninstall it. You know, the yeah. Verizon Navigator VP Protect. Actually, a lot of these have been disabled. The Verizon Cloud because I just can't bear to have all those red icons in there. Um, but you know, those take up, don't take up a huge amount of space. It's just, you know, in most phones, if you're going to get a carrier subsidized, they're going to have something like that. But let's talk about battery life because that's the reason you got it. We see we're here. I, I disconnected this morning at 7 a.m. I'm at 59% mm -hmm. battery. I run this uh, battery monitor, the GCM, GCM battery monitor where I'm testing new phones and use it over a period of time to get some sense of how the battery is doing. It also tells you uh, which applications are sucking the most battery. And I try to take off the most battery-intensive applications. Facebook, gone. Mm -hmm. Twitter, gone. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, the Amazon Kindle, gone. Now, this comes with the Amazon, full suite of Amazon software, another deal Verizon made. Um, so you can't uninstall Amazon Kindle, but you could disable it. And that was one of the things, I, even though I had no Kindle books on here, I hadn't signed up for the Kindle account, that it just kept waking up the phone. So I turned yeah. all that stuff off. According to GSAM, I can expect about 20 hours of battery life. Now, for me, that's really good. That's right up there with yeah. the OnePlus One. I would say this phone isn't quite as good as the OnePlus One. It should be two days and three days because of that size battery. And Motorola, in fact, says you should be able to get 48 hours. But, you know, those, those numbers vary depending on how you use your phone. I know how I use my phone. I use it hard. I talk to it a lot. Yeah. I'm always looking at the screen, and this is a great, beautiful, bright screen. Um, but the battery life uh, is not as much as it ought to be. However, it is better than the Moto X, and it probably will get you through the day unless you're really, you know, really crazy. A couple of things you should know. This has a 21-megapixel yep. camera. That seems to be a lot better. But, in fact, in use, I haven't found it to be any better. And it has a flaw that a number of reviewers have reported that might drive you crazy. Watch how long it takes to take this picture. See that second lag right there? And now you have a giant file. That's annoying. And, yeah, it yeah. is a big file, although that gives you the ability, as with a Nokia phone, to right. zoom in a little bit right. because you have so many pixels. It's a good camera. Uh, I think the Moto X was a good camera. It has all the features, the uh, auto HDR and so forth of the Moto X. But that, that little lag, every time you take a picture, mm -hmm. that could be a little bit annoying. So uh, that we're going to have to mark it down just a little bit for that. On the pros and cons, well, the pros, there is a... There's no higher spec phone than this. This has got everything yeah. you'd want in it, including a, a 500 plus dots per inch screen. Wow. Wow. You could tell your friends. They won't be able to tell the <laughs> difference, but you could tell your friends. Uh, 21 megapixel camera is pretty impressive as well. And hey, this is made out of Kevlar. I think the red's pretty styling myself. A lot of people like the uh, nylon ballistic back as well. It's kind of an, a unique look for a phone. Um, it is a basically relatively pure Google experience. In fact, the Moto Xs are already being soaked test for lollipop. Every time I say Moto X, it wakes up. I'm not talking to you. Um, <laughs> they're being soak tested for lollipop. I imagine the Droid Turbo will as well because it is as pure a Google phone, minus the Verizon stuff, uh, as anything else is. I mean, it really it is a Google phone. It looks exactly the same as the Google phones. It has exactly the same uh, interface. This is pretty pure, uh, but you've got some additional... Uh, Motorola stuff, which is great. I think all of that is a, a plus, and it hasn't been much of a um, uh, a negative on the Moto X phones. So this is very similar to that. You'll recognize this immediately. Um, cons: the battery should be better than it is. There have been days where, in fact, this uh, died on me at about uh, nine o'clock a couple mm -hmm. of nights ago, and I feel like, gosh, it should be better. It. Uh, oh, one more pro: uh, like the Moto X, uh, the and the Galaxy Note Four, and a lot of new. Snapdragon-based phones, it does do the rapid charging. That's a Qualcomm feature. It does require a specialized rapid charger. I played around with it a little bit. It thinks that the uh, Galaxy Note 4 rapid charger is a rapid charger. The Galaxy Note thinks that the Motorola rapid charger is a rapid charger. So this is a standard that goes beyond yeah. any particular manufacturer. It does charge it up fast, about 50% in half an hour. That's nice. Uh, I, I certainly recommend using it. The other thing that's unique about this, it has it supports Qi charging, wireless charging. So I have a Qi stand by my bedside. I put this in there and uh, charge it, and that's a very nice and easy way to do that. The Moto X does not support. Does not support that.
I feel like the Moto X is just jealous yeah. now. It's just getting that's, jealous. That's why you need a battery because it's always <laughs> going on accidentally. Uh, the cons on this, as I said, uh, I would like to see more for the battery life. It is thicker. It is heavier. Um, that doesn't bother me so much. It feels like a manly phone. Manly. And that's what yes. the Droid brand, frankly, was all about is, you know, power, more power. A definite buy on the Droid Turbo. If you're looking for Moto X-like capabilities of fairly pure Google experience, and a phone that has state-of-the-art across the border. You can live with a few of the negatives, like the little lag in the picture. By that way, that could be fixed uh, in, a, in an update, as could be the, uh, the, the um, uh, issue with voice over LTE. If you can live with those, I would say a definite buy on the Droid Turbo.